Okay, welcome back to the final session of the workshop. So the next speaker is Chibin Zhao from Wiken EIT. So he will be talking about Excel machine learning with temporal data. Okay. Thank you for your introduction. I'm happy to be here. Today I'm going to talk about efficient machine learning with tensor network. So as we know that, uh, that now the machine learning uh, for practical applications have a very big trend. Uh, it depends on mostly due to the foundation model, large, uh, large language models. So we, we always require a large amount of big data set and very huge model, uh, model size and with a lot of parameters. And, uh, and uh, as well as heavy computation cost. So one example is like GPT and uh, it costs a lot of data set, data hungry and 175 billion number of parameters and maybe chat GPT even more. And for computation, it needs like, if, if we use one GPU, it needs uh, GPU, uh, 100 GPU years and it costs a lot of money. So, our research is try to um, try to develop develop, uh, develop some method like uh, for uh, some applications we don't have uh, high quality data set or huge data set or some special applications um, for efficient learn from the data and also we want to uh, train the model with more efficient parameterized uh, deep neural network or any other method. And finally, we also want to uh, improve computation efficiency. So today I will give an um, overview about uh, how to use a tensor method to handle these challenges from different uh, applications and the perspectives. From the data perspective, sometimes uh, our applications, we don't have a large amount of training data samples. Maybe like recombinant system, we have only one, da one data which is multi-dimensional, high, highly structured data. And the data is highly missing. So most of uh, entries are missing. And uh, we, our goal is to try to capture the um, data structure and using such knowledge to predict the missing point. And also some applications like signal processing or satellite image, we only have the very noisy data. And, uh, uh, and we try to remove the uh, noise or remove the cloud, but we don't have a, a lot, large number of training data for the same scenario. And uh, similar to the graph prediction. Another case is about robustness to adversary examples. We consider adversary examples is also some kind of noises, but such noises is specially designed deliberately. So next from the model perspectives, as we know, the deep neural network uh, is quite powerful and a high performance uh, using the over parameterization uh, technique. And it's already demonstrated it can um, avoid overfitting and the high performance. But such complex architecture always uh, have a large number of parameters, which will we, we lead to the heavy computation for uh, training and uh, inference. So one question is, can we, uh, uh, we assume that such large number of parameters may contain a lot of redundant information. Can we try to learn an, uh, another model with less number of parameters, but with keep the comparable performance? And uh, another point is over parameterization also generates some other uh, property of deep neural network like uh, lack of interpret, uh, interpretability and the lack of robustness uh, because deep neural network is uh, usually considered as a black box nature. So uh, question is how to dramatically increase the model capacity, but without significantly increasing the model size. Uh, then next uh, we'll show some uh, our previous work from the data perspective and model perspective. One specific task is learning from the limited tensor uh, data and try to predict unobserved entries. So given a uh, multi-dimensional data, we assume the um, large number of uh, pixels or elements are missing. We try to complete such data 
using the structure information from the data. So the challenge is, is how to improve the data efficiency. So how to use less uh, inches to capture the structure from the whole data. Uh, and the second is scalability and the efficient optimization algorithm uh, to, to learn for the, the data very, more efficiently. Uh, and the last one is theoretically, we hope our method have exactly recovery guarantee. So the tensor completion is uh, one research uh, direction to handle such uh, problem. And uh, usually this is a very standard general minimization problem. Uh, there are two terms. First is fitting error on the observed entries. So given the data Y, we try to estimate the uh, approximation X, uh, which have a, a smaller error on the ob observed entries. A second term is the key to make our method work. It's a, some kind of structure regularizer. So how to define, uh, make assumption on a structure regularizer is a key point. So there are already many popular approach, like we can assume the low rank needs on the data. Uh, such assumption is already demonstrated very powerful and popular, which is a convex optimization. Uh, but uh, the, per um, the difficulty is not scalable usually. However, when the data X is a high dimensional, multi-dimensional data, the low rank needs uh, is not well defined, like which uh, X is, uh, Y is a tensor, and uh, how to define the low rank needs, how to minimize the low rank uh, um, based on some nuclear norm is, uh, is a problem to study. And second approach is we assume the data has a specific structure. Let's assume the data has a, a tensor network structure or tensor decomposition structure. Then after, based on this assumption, we try to decompose the, the data and we try to learn the latent factors. Uh, by using such approach, uh, their problem is how to learn, uh, how to optimize the rank is uh, some kind of model selection problem. It's very difficult. And third one is the dependent application. We sometimes use other knowledge like smoothness, non-negativity, or other set of information. So in, uh, one example for uh, the computer vision image denoising, as we know, the non-local technique is quite powerful. The idea is to find the similar patch and uh, group the all patches together using the low rank approximation to uh, remove the noises. So, this uh, non-local technique uh, using low rank is not on the original data, but on the small patches. That means such data is not globally low rank, but if we use small patches, we can show that such group uh, patches is low rank. Inspired uh, by this work, so we, we formulate the general framework, like we define new nuclear norm, which is not on the original data space, but but is a nuclear norm on the, under the linear transformation of data, like uh, X uh, after linear uh, transformation, and we try to impose the low rank needs or nuclear norm. Of course, here is a nuclear norm. It depends on the data is tensor or matrix. We can have different definition. And then uh, the tensor SVD is one popular uh, technique. Uh, which is uh, using the special transformation, which is uh, like Fourier transform or D uh, DCT transform along one specific mode. So that means after Fourier transform on the third mode, and they assume that each matrix is low rank, and such uh, low rank needs uh, incorporate smooth needs and the low rank uh, simultaneously. So based on this, we propose two type of uh, definition of nuclear norm based on uh, TSVD. One is the summation of uh, nuclear norm based on TSVD. Another one is, uh, is minimized of our three mode. So these two nuclear norm also have different error bound. We can see that in general, the latent TSVD nuclear norm give our smaller error bound due to here's the minimization minimize of different K, different mode. Uh, another line of uh, uh, research is uh, first 
uh, we assume our data is not high order, not a very high order tensor, but uh, we can tensorize, uh, arbitrarily tensorize the data from the low dimensional to high dimension. After that, we uh, assume the tensor network structure to approximate such data. Then finally, we can reconstruct the original data. And th this approach, uh, this framework actually solves several problems. One is this tensorization actually is some kind of linear transformation. It's a special kind of linear transformation. So we can capture more low rank needs on inside the data. Like in matrix case, you only capture the correlation between row and column, but after tensorization, you can capture more correlations like from this patch to another patch. And another one is we assume the tensor network structure, which is more complex compared to CPD, uh, CP decomposition or target decomposition, which only works for three order tensor. And uh, also compared to matrix, low rank needs on tensor network give us more information and flexibility. And another point is to improve the uh, computation efficiency we impose the nuclear norm minimization on the latent cores instead of, uh, instead of original space. Why? So that means we combine the uh, two probes together. So now, now let me briefly introduce what tensor network. It's very uh, intuitive extension from the matrix factorization to tensor factorization and tensor factorization uh, mostly we handle the for, for three order tensor and they are only CPD and Tucker, the two popular models. But when the uh, tensor is uh, extended to the N order, we have more uh, flexibility. There are uh, many different kinds of tensor networks. And in this tensor network, actually more studies from the physics, they study uh, many years ago, and uh, here is some typical tensor network like tensor train or PEPS or tensor tree, uh, tree tensor. So um, the key concept is to how to represent the N order tensor as a N small core tensors. And the N core tensors connection means contraction uh, or some kind of operations. So that means we have original the big tensor data. We try to represent such big tens tensor as many small core tensors. If the all if all uh, data can be represented in this way, so we uh, we may do the computation more efficient, or we can capture more data structure uh, from uh, using tensor network representation. And this is a very special tensor network. So we call this tensor ring decomposition. So given an N order tensor, we decompose it as N small core tensors and they, do, uh, uh, they have a ring structure that means connected from the first core to last core, then uh, we have a loop or ring structure. So the, uh, mathematically, it actually each element like X uh, given an element, so it's equal to we take one slices from each core tensors according to the, the index uh, on the mode. And the, we do the product or matrix or matrix product. Oh. And then finally, we have a trace operation. And due to this tree operation is related to tensor ring. And a uh, good property is we have a circular permutation invariance. So the data can be permitted circularly and it doesn't change the result. So next we switch to the unsupervised setting when we have a data, but the data is missing, like many features are missing, how to do the supervised learning. Our goal is to train, to learn the class fair F uh, on the incomplete data, but our goal is to try to estimate the class fair, which is same as trained on the complete data. So intuitively we can, we can apply uh, previous work like tensor completion first, make the complete data, then train the class fair. But such approach doesn't work well because it, when you do the com completion like these cases, you don't know which one you should complete data. That means you, you didn't use any label information. So we, we try to use label information for completion and uh, 
uh, class, uh, training the cluster fire simultaneously. Then we propose uh, the, our approach is to do these two procedures simultaneously. So that means when we do the completion, we also consider label, label information. Then we, we show that theoretically, given some condition, we can learn the true class fire on, on the missing data. And another work is for the ten, uh, tensor, uh, tensorized time series data. Also, uh, there are many missing points like time point and how to learn a model to make prediction for continuous time. And the standard, if you apply the tensorized uh, RNN, it cannot uh, handle the irregular time point or prediction or the continuous time point. And the neural ODE can do this work. But neural ODE in, uh, standardly cannot capture the data tensor structure. So we combine these two ideas to develop a new approach. So uh, uh, basically, it's a neural, neural ODE framework to model the deriv uh, derivatives of time series, but each time point is a tensor. So we, we, uh, we're using the neural network is tensorized neural network instead of standard neural network. So the, each layer is using the tensor contraction layer. And such tensor contraction layer gave us uh, much less number of parameters, which is linearly to n instead of exponentially with n. Now, uh, finally, we consider the data, if the data is noisy, and here is the perturbation, perturbation is some kind of special designed noise. So we, uh, some work or also show that if we use tensor completion, we can remove the perturbation efficiently. And in this case, we don't need to retrain our classifier by using adversary training. We only put uh, one more step before the data, uh, putting uh, input the classifier to try to remove the perturbation. And a similar idea can be worked to GNN if we do the uh, poison the, uh, attack and we, uh, we can calculate many different graph and uh, concatenate them using the low rank approximation to remove the perturbation. Okay, so next uh, perspective is from the uh, modeling, per, uh, efficient modeling. And as we know, the one, um, one work is model compression. To, um, that means to keep the same uh, performance, how to compress your model. So this is a standard fully connected layer. And the W is our weight parameters. We try to compress the weight W using the less uh, number of parameters. So uh, standardly, uh, in general, in principle, we can use consider the W is a huge matrix. We tensorize W as a high order tensor. Then we assume it's represented as a tensor train matrix. By using such trick, the number of parameter will reduce to the this root uh, Mn, from the Mn to this root. Of course, the, mm, the precision of Compression depends on your rank. If the W has good low rank structure, you can get much more compression. But, uh, but if you increase R, you can represent any kind of W, even the W is not Gaussian noise. Then based on such tensor network representation, we try to change all the latent presentation, latent layer and the parameters are all tensor network. Then the operation is also based on tensor network operation. So to understand why it works, we study a simple case is a latent factor analysis, uh, which is the, which is shown here. Let's assume that we tensorize Y as a high order tensor. Then marginalize um, eta, we get a Gaussian distribution Y, which is the covariance V becomes a high order tensor. So. According to traditional way, we decompose covariance matrix. Um, instead of matrix decomposition, we use tensor network de uh, decomposition, and we can infer the uh, W. So that means if we impose the tensor network representation on the parameters W, that means we give the implicit assumption on the tensor structure of data Y. So that means your data assumed to be tensorized as a high order tensor. So, but our input data is not always high order structure. So how to create the high order tensor network uh, uh, structure of input, 
this work shows that actually we can do the each feature projected on the two-dimensional vectors. You can consider this is a probability to be one or to be zero. Then each feature is a two-dimensional vector. We do the tensor product or all features we create a rank one tensor. So this is a tensor network. Um, we created tensor network for the input data. And this idea is inspired from the quantum system that like each feature is represented the quantum qubit, the probability. Okay, now they show that uh, on amnist data set, they achieve comparable performance. To, to go further, we develop, we try to enhance more uh, representation ability using the tensor product. We define such ten tensor polynomial uh, pooling layer. So using the tensor product for the all features, uh, concatenation of all features, you can consider Z1, Z2 is from a different modality. So the representation from different model modality, then we can apply this to multimodal learning. And we have F is a tensor network structure, which uh, has enhanced representation. And next, we, our parameters W must decompose using tensor network. Otherwise, it's a curse of dimensional. It's a high, very high order exponential of dimensionality. So finally, we see that number of parameters is only linearly uh, increased with P, and the computation can be computed efficiently by using tensor network. So we don't need to calculate this tensor network uh, explicitly. And a similar idea can be also applied to recurrent neural network. We show that using the high, uh, high order tensor product, uh, the, we can further increase the <coughs> uh, long, um, RN memory, memory because in general, I and LSTM don't have long memory, but we show that if we use tensor product, and when the P is larger, it will lead to the long memory, and the P is smaller, we generate a short memory. And this work is done by the research scientist Cho, who is sitting there. So next is uh, many research work using tensor network to represent parameters, uh, but which one, which uh, tensor network structure is optimal, it's, uh, it's not clear. And usually people are using uh, by manually to choose. So next, we also study how to learn the tensor network structure search, and uh, which is different with traditional study, which usually to learn the rank or learn the topology. We try to learn all, all of them simultaneously, like uh, with uh, the rank and the permutation and the topology. So we consider tensor network is a graph. So we try to learn the best graph. And the edge means rank, and the graph structure is tensor network topology. Also, and I'll try to understand convolutional neural network, we, 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 we derive another way to understand convolutional neural network. We convert a, it as a, a high order uh, convolution. Uh, which called Votarian um, convolution. That means we can change the deep neural network as one layer neural network, but it, uh, this layer has many sub, uh, sub neural network. The first one is a one order convolution and, uh, uh, and the next one is the second order convolution. We have n such neural network makes, uh, make linear combination. So based on this, we, uh, we show that actually they are equivalent that even we learn the perturbation to attack VC network, the such attack uh, perturbation can also attack original neural network. And uh, also based on this, we can show the upper bound for perturbation. So finally, maybe I use uh, one minute to show some research on computation efficiency, but this is a summary of other researchers. So recently work in last year published in Nature, which is developed by DeepMind, they try to solve computation efficiency by change the efficiency of matrix multiplication. So how to find the efficient way to compute uh, matrix multiplication. It's a very basic uh, operation. And uh, 
they try to uh, first encode, encode the algorithm as a tensor, then using the tensor decomposition to find the best algorithm. So after tensor decomposition, the latent factor corresponding to the fast algorithm. That means if the rank is seven, we just need only need the seven, um, seven uh, multiplications because on the, each rank one means um, one multiplication. So this is a very practical application of tensor, network, uh, tensor decomposition for the real science problem. But when the matrix R is big, the uh, such method is very efficient to find the best algorithm. But, uh, uh, but unfortunately, after one week, uh, the human found another best one, which show that even better than deep mind result. So I, I'm wondering maybe the, they have a tensor decomposition is not very optimal algorithm because they use alpha zero to do tensor decomposition to try to search uh, latent factors. Uh, and we try, we, we want to uh, further improve maybe for the large matrix multiplications. And last one is the quantum, quantum machine learning. Also, we are considering if we should uh, is explore this field because in the quantum machine learning, uh, the, all the quantum circuit is unitary transformation, which is easily converted to tensor network. Um, but currently, still, uh, situation is the performance cannot compete with uh, standard neural network, but they have a great future or for quantum computer efficiency. Okay, uh, and uh, this is summary. I'm sorry, maybe time up. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Dancers, dancers, dancers representations also play a, a role in something called these polynomial neural networks. Have you seen these? Yeah, actually, uh, our actually after derivation, using one layer uh, tensor, like like here. Mm -hmm. After derivation, we can show that it's some it's similar to polynomial. Uh, your network, yeah, but those, only those one. Those achieve the state of the art in, for example, generation, face recognition, so on and so forth. Okay. It, yeah, for classification, we can, for the uh, simple data set, we can achieve uh, similar performance. But for the more complex, like uh, more image net data set, I think the performance is still uh, worse than deep your network because it's only single layer yeah. polynomial. Yeah. Mm. I mean, so people concatenate these kind of things on top, mm. right? Use Hadamard product uh, as a key building tool to get scalability as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so it, it seems now there are a lot of like, new architectures uh, yeah. as you proposed. Then suppose we want to use tensor technology to do knowledge distillation. So is there any like standard recipe to, to compress this work? Uh, so currently we try to find maybe advantages compared to neural network. Mm -hmm. One is for using efficient parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, but the point is the performance is the most important. If you show the performance is not comparable, it's not a good thing. So we try to uh, find if the, there are some other prop uh, property like more robust. And uh, we, we have some uh, preliminary uh, studies show that tensor network, if our model is purely tensor network model, uh, naturally it's more robust than the uh, Neural network. R robust against what? Uh, 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 adversary attack. Uh. Mm. Be yeah, because the architecture is uh, actually we can consider it's a shallow neural network. Mm. It's wide, not deep, but uh, uh, have a similar, uh, how to say, it's excessiveness as a deep one. Mm. Okay. Mm. Or, or, or another proper, um, property is interpretability. Mm. 
it's more interpretable if it's polynomial to a module. All right, then let's thank the speaker.